me in Ontario. So, so very excited. All right, everyone. Well, good morning, Remax, and welcome to the Remax Business Builder session. We've all been anticipating. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. I got up this morning just fired up. I know that our special guest did too, and I just can't even wait for you all to meet him. So like so many of you, we all saw and were captivated and wowed by this individual on the Remax R4 stage. He's been around for a couple of years doing some amazing things, and we all got to see him in person, and I'm so thrilled to have him here with us. Uh, so by the way, welcome everyone. Join us, come on in, and happy May the 4th be with you. <laughs> That's hard to say, so Star Wars fans, you'll get it. But we are so excited. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Today's topic is you are your best prospecting tool. There has never been a better person in the entire network that is more suited for this topic than Quintavious. So everyone, let's meet our very special guest. So Q, introduce yourself, tell everyone all about you, your history at Remax, your family, and anything else you want us to know. Good morning, good morning. Guys, I'm so excited uh, to be a part of this this morning. I wake up every day around that four o'clock hour and this morning was different. I woke up because I understood that I had a mission, a mission to come on this morning and share with you guys um, a very important um, topic. Uh, and it's all about you. And, and my name is Quintavious, as, as you guys know, everyone calls me Q. If you ever call my phone and get my voicemail, you will hear that. Everyone calls me uh, Q. So I want you guys to call me Q and know me as Q. Um, I'm from Senatobia, Mississippi, a small town here of about 8,000. Um, growing up, I was one of 17 kids. So everything that I got for, I had to fight. And the fight in me has not stopped. Um, I wake up every day seeing how I can attack the day. Um, and with athletics, that kind of molded me into the guy that I am today. You know, I grew up playing football, running track. I played football and ran track in college at Ole Miss. I got a master's in accounting while um, at Ole Miss. And um, I had an opportunity to have a trial with the Giants and it didn't work out how I planned it to. So I thought, let's use this old accounting degree that I have. That'll work, right? So I moved to Atlanta from Mississippi. You put a country boy in the city, by God, it's something different. Um, driving three miles that took me an hour and a half, just wasn't getting it. And also just looking at the billing report, showing, seeing what they were billing the clients versus what they was paying me. This guy here, he Googled, what profession can I make what I'm worth? And real estate popped up. Who would have ever thought uh, that real estate would pop up first? So I kind of watched a couple videos of some folks and I said, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. The very next day, I put a two week notice in. I didn't think about it long. Uh, I called home and everyone back home thought I was a fool. Oh, you're about to give up this good job to come and do what? This commission only, you can't make it. Well, here's the thing. It was all about me. And today, you guys, I'm going to tell you and share with you how you can brand yourself to be successful in this business, regardless of all the noise. Um, so I moved back home from Atlanta. I get a real estate license. Um, I joined Remax. Guys, two years ago, I did not know what Remax was. I'm, I'm, I'm as green as they come. And for you guys who don't know what green means, it's I'm ripe. I'm new. I'm young, dumb, and full of energy. So what I had to do was, I had to get in and I had to outwork folks. My first six, uh, six months in the business, I was just making calls, making calls, making calls. My first 30 days in the business, I talked to over 6,000 people. All right, I joined Remax uh, back in 2019. And my first year, I sold 106 houses, uh, made chairs, Chairman's Club. My second year, I topped that by selling more houses. Uh, and made Hall of Fame within my second year. This year, I'm on pace if everything works out to hit diamond, maybe. Um, so we will see what happens. But this is my story. I'm Quintavious Burdett from a small town, and I'm a young guy trapped in an old body um, or an old guy trapped in a young body because I do business the old school way. I like the cold call. I like the door knock. I like to get in front of you and talk but that's just my thing. 
And today I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit about it. That's amazing. So 17 kids, where are you in the birth order? So I'm the fourth oldest. So the I have one young ones that's looking up to me and um, they wanna see how, how to do things, how to do it right, how to do it wrong. I can show them both ways. Um, but the older, my older siblings are, are also learning and it's helpful to see them change in their lives and do something great. Uh, but I'm the fourth oldest. So those young books, they keep me going. Wow. Well, I, I really like your expression. I had to fight for everything I had. And it's yes, so obvious you're doing that in your career and, and your professional growth. So that's amazing. So I'm just curious, when you started at, in the real estate business, did you, I know you did research and you, you know that it could be very lucrative. Um, and I'm sure you knew going into it, there'd be a lot of hard work. But what did you know? Did you know any real estate professionals that in your network? Uh, what did you know about the industry or did you have any preconceived notions about going into it? So starting, let me tell you guys how, um, I guess, ignorant I was to the real estate uh, game. I came out and I did not know 106 houses would, would equal up to what I did. What I told my uh, our owner, Sammy Knight is, he owns our offices here and a couple other locations is, I'm gonna do 500,000 my first year. And I started just telling everybody that. And they're looking at me like, this kid's a fool. He don't understand what it takes. He knows nothing, he has nothing. He's day one on a job talking about 500 grand worth of commission. And it motivated me to a level of, I have to prove to myself that I can do it first. It's all about me, all about me, but also I want to shut the noise up. I want to do the things that they said was impossible. I want to do the things they said was just so hard that I would burn myself out doing, but yet and still I'll do it three years in a row and I have more free time than anybody. Uh, but as far as knowing folks, no, I knew one guy, which was Sammy Knight, which he, like I said, he owns the Remaxes, and I knew he was, he had something to do with real estate, but I didn't know what because he, he managed homes back in oxford where we're from uh and where i went to school so i called him and said hey i'm moving back home i'm thinking about getting into real estate who can you point me to and he was like well you know you can join my remax keep in mind sammy told me about six months prior because i was only at kpmg four months hey you can come and do the accounting for my remax and i'm like dude i'm and when he said i was like I'm, I'm not trying to do accounting for your Remax, and I'm trying to get into real estate. Do you know any real estate companies? He was like, Q, Remax is a real estate company. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Sign me up, buddy. You know, uh, but as far as knowing other agents, I did not. I, I clicked up with a um, lender here that I knew because he was an old Miss guy, and he introduced me uh, to a very successful agent within my market, and I started picking his brain. And he and his wife started about 15 years ago and they sold, I think, right at $18 million the first year. So that was my goal. I was like, well, shoot, if they can do it 15 years ago, I can definitely do it. Then I started seeing a folks around the country that I'm talking to uh, that's saying, hey, you know, we're selling a hundred houses. And I was like, oh, hundred houses. I can do that too. So it was just all these things that I saw other people do that I said, okay, I'm gonna take on that load. I'm gonna try my best to get there. But my goal all along was to prove that 500,000 was capable your very first year in the business without knowing anything. I'm the first person in my family to graduate college. I'm the first person in my family to own a business, okay? I'm the first person probably within my intermediate family who's made more than $40,000 in a year. So to tell a kid, hey, move back to Mississippi, get a real estate license, you're gonna be successful, it's just unheard of, you know? But I understood and I believed in myself so much and I would do things most agents wouldn't. I would stay up here until the sun went down and I would get up before the sun got up. I would post videos of me working and I would post me walking through the office at eight o'clock at night with everyone gone and I'm here working. I would post that and I would say that and, I, and it got contagious to folks they saw my work ethic that they started giving me opportunities. I would knock on doors and then I would go to Kroger and pass out business cards and help folks bag groceries. And the same people who I bag groceries for later that day, I knock on their door and they was like, wait, are you following me? No, I'm not. I'm just working. You know? <laughs> so it was one of those things and it just became contagious and I got addicted to 
the yeses that I was getting and all the no's, I have, I get no more than anything. I get no probably 10 times more than I get yes, but I'm so addicted to continuing to go and go and push myself because I know that there's another yes that's going to come and I never get discouraged. That's amazing. Well, and just for those of you that are newer to Remax, in case you don't know, Chairman's level is 500,000 in gross commission income. Remax Hall of Fame is an, an overall achievement of 1 million. Quintavious has achieved both. Uh, he achieved Chairman's Club back to back 2019 and 2020 and Remax Hall of Fame. So congratulations. I saw a picture of you at R4 so by your star, you're on the Walk of Fame. <laughs> so that's fantastic. Well, so let's talk a little bit more about how you went about, can you dive a little deeper into the mentoring that you received when you first got in the business? Um, first of all, I think it's amazing because it sounds like when you got in this business, you envisioned yourself being successful. You saw others being successful and you said, you know what, I can do that too. And I think oftentimes a lot of individuals come into this business and they're extremely intimidated by the multi-million dollar producers thinking, oh, I'll never get there, or they feel discouraged. So that's amazing. Talk a little bit more about what type of mentoring went on with the groups that you spent time with. Was it weekly? Did you shadow them? Uh, tell us a little bit more. Right. So um, I've always been, and my dad, he kind of raised us up like this, where he didn't, he didn't teach us how to change the tire. He went outside and changed the tire. And he expected eventually for you to come out there and watch enough to where you learn how to change the tire. He didn't teach us how to cut grass. He went outside every week and cut grass. He expected for you to come out and watch him cut grass to learn. So the same thing that I've grown up doing in my entire life was what I did in real estate. I didn't expect anyone to say, here, let me hold your hand. Let me tell you everything that I know about real estate. What I did was I watched. I watched what they would do. I watched the places they would go. I watched the, the conversations they would, they would have. I had to learn how to have a business type conversation. I don't come from that background. I have to learn when I go out to dinner or to lunch to put my handkerchief or napkin, whatever it is in my lap. I did not know that. Um, I didn't grow up like that. So a lot of stuff I learned by watching. I would see them do it. The next time I would go, I would do it. The stuff that they talked about and how they carry themselves out in public, I knew, okay, hey, I have to do it this way until I started to catch on and catch on and catch on and catch on. Then I would call and ask questions. Hey, I got this situation come up. How would you handle it? And they would walk me through it. Okay, I got that one. I never asked the same question twice. And then I leaned on my broker a lot. So when I got started, I hit the ground running. My first month, uh, I didn't have any closings. By month two, I had 10 closings on the board. And it all came from cold calling, door knocking, going out meeting folks, getting people to trust me and like me and seeing them over and over and bugging them to death to where they just had to say yes or, or, or I wouldn't let them sleep at night. But they gave me that opportunity. And when I had that opportunity, I called upon the people that I knew that could potentially help me and the ones who helped, I appreciated them. And the ones who didn't, I appreciated them. I didn't look at them any differently because maybe they see something in me that they see in themselves and they're fearful. They don't want to help me because they know if they help, eventually I'll pass them. But the ones who are actually at the top, they help me every time I call and I appreciate it. So it was it was more so of I only picked up the phone when it was a new situation that I've never, ever encountered, that I have no idea on how to handle that situation. I would call and ask someone. But I spent most of my time like perfecting my craft. I was in a one bedroom apartment by myself. It was when I used to take my laptop home. Now, I don't take my laptop home at all, zero. My laptop stays at my office. I don't do any work at home. But when I first got started, I would take my laptop home. I would make calls to like eight o'clock at night, practicing over and over and over on people before I actually started to click and it hit me that I knew what I was doing. I knew what I had to say. I just had to put it all together. And it wasn't that I said the right thing in one call. I said the right thing in 15 different calls, but the right thing was at different points. So what I learned was my best cold call is when I ask for the person, I introduce myself, I give back to the time, I neutralize the conversation, and then I get to the point. But I learned that by on one call, I might call and just get to the point. They liked it, but it was too fast. 
Then my snakes call, they might they like that I introduce myself and they talk to me a little longer, but my introduction was too long of myself. So I had to learn how to shorten that. And then some of them, they like how I ask for them and I introduce myself, but maybe I didn't catch them at a, a good time. They're like, hey, you didn't even stop to ask me, is now a good time for me to talk about, I'm busy. So I learned that as I went, what folks are liking, what they want, what they expect, and then I made it into one, boom, one machine that works like clockwork now, and I'm calm, and I'm peaceful, and I'm talking, and I'm on the phone, cold calling. I sound just like this. <laughs> I've done it so much now, and I've learned, and I've watched, and my mentors, you know, I started out where I got the ideal of cold calling um, and, and, and from uh, Ricky, who was with Remax now with EXP. That's neither here nor there for other reasons, not because it's a better brand, but because it fits where he where his agenda is. All right. So, but I didn't cold call like he cold called. I saw the idea. And all I need is this. I tell people all the time, I see a vision this big. And before you know it, I didn't open it up. Yeah. That's all I need to see. I need to see just a tad bit of a vision for me to attack it and open it up. And that's exactly what I did every day. I attacked it. I saw something different, saw something new, and I went after it. And I went after it until I perfected it. I love it. So tell me really quick, because I know everyone's wondering, how did you get those phone numbers and what strategy did you did you use to start calling? Right. So you can get phone numbers um, one of, or, of, of two ways. Uh, and I just learned a new way just yesterday, actually. So one way that I, when I first got started where I would get numbers is you can go to the tax assessor. And I'm not sure in your area how it works, but figure out how to work your tax assessor and start pulling up deeds. Every single deed has to have a name, address, and a phone number of some sort. Can't leave it blank. They have to have it. They have to write it down. So nine times out of 10, when folks at the closing table, they write their sale number or their work number or the house number. So now you have a number to that exact property. That's one way you can find phone numbers. The second and the most easiest way where you can find a bulk of numbers at one time is Red X. You can type in an address and it'll pull up the next 100, 200, 300 numbers on Red X that will allow you to make calls. You can make three calls at one time with Red X. So now you're doing three times the work and less time because you're calling three people at one time but you have to understand how to navigate those conversations because what you're going to get is if two people answer, you set up basically a callback. All right, you set up a callback. So one person is going to get you live bullets and one person will get dummy bullets. You have to set that dummy bullet call up as if, A, you got to tell them exactly what's going on or you have to make them think that something is wrong and you're going to call them right back. For instance, if I call and two people answer, if I get somebody, I'm talking to them. But the second person, the thing that I recorded was like, hey, hello, hey, it's quick. hey, hello. Hey, I'm in a bad spot, I have to call you back. So it's one of those things where now they're like, who, who's, who is this guy, what's going on? He's gonna, okay, I answer when he calls. All right, so uh, Red X was one, you can get it in the deeds. Red X is most effective because it, it, it saves you time. The deed is more accurate. Red X, you might get wrong numbers, but here's the name of the game. As long as someone pick up the phone and say, hello, yeah. you have a perfect lead. It don't have to be that person on the phone, or it don't have to be the person name that you're looking at or the address. It's three ways that you can go about that conversation. And we can dive deeper into those three ways and how to handle those. If we have time to do so, you just tell me and I'll do it. Sure. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Can I just make one quick comment? For those yeah. of you, those of you in Canada, I'm not 100% sure if Red X is available there. So please, if anyone from Canada has some good tips for the rest of the group, uh, please go ahead and type it in the chat box for all of Canada to see uh, what's available to you to get phone numbers. So thank you for that. Thank you for those recommendations. Now that you're at Remax Q, first of all, I can only imagine just by saying, hi, this is Contavious Burdett with Remax. How many doors that opens for you? It goes and it's got to be amazing. So what do you love about Remax now that you're here? Yes, I love the family atmosphere. I love the, the uh, openness that we have within this within this company to say, hey, I'm going to pick up the phone and call Q 
and ask him to do a, a Zoom. And it's for guys like myself to answer and say, absolutely. And you see that at the top level all the time. You know, you have agents all around the country who's giving back their time, but also helping others within the community. You know, this is a family. We're all in it together. And I got to tell folks all the time, REMAX can be two things. It can be an elephant because we're the biggest brand there is. And we can be a lion because we're the baddest brand out there. We have to decide every single day which route we want to take. Because when a lion meets an elephant, he thinks dinner. He's about to get after it. But when an elephant being the biggest animal in the jungle, he should run it. When he see a lion, he thinks run. So every day we have an opportunity to choose. Not, other, not many brokerages have that opportunity to say, hey, will I be a lion or an elephant? Most of them are deer. Yeah. All they're doing is running. All right. But I love I love Freemax because A, it's easy when I call now. It's brand awareness. And once you connect yourself with brands that you don't have to explain, it makes it easier on the call. All right. So now when I'm calling, and uh, some folks don't know what Crowdlight is or Keller Williams or ESP or or Century 21, they don't, some of them don't know. But most of them, when I say, hey, this is Quintavious with Remax, they know why I'm calling. I don't have to do anything else. Some of them even tell me, man, get to the point. What, what can I do to help, man? I know I already know what you're calling for. And it helps me. Now I skip from one, two to five of getting to the point in less time. So now they're excited to hear that I'm a free mask because they understand the brand. It's experienced agents that know what they're doing. They know how to get a house sold. They sell more real estate than anybody. And you're a part of this. You're a part of something very, very special. And if you're on this call and you're not a part of it, you need to Google the closest Remax office to you and try to get a part of it. Because like I said, you're missing out on something very, very special within this family. We care about one another. We reach out, we help. And it's all everything that I ever wish for. That's amazing. Thank you for saying that. I'm sure all the broker owners watching right now are so happy you said that. <laughs> it's the truth. Um, I can tell people all the time. I only speak the truth. I and you're so sincere about it. I love that. Okay, so Quintavius has some really cool things he wants to share with you on some slides here in just a minute. Before we do, what you're really known for, and by the way, we're going to take questions from all of you because I know you all want to talk to him. I know you want to ask questions. Um, so you're known for your amazing ability, your remarkable ability to just strike up a conversation with anyone about real estate in general. The art of conversation has been somewhat lost with this huge technology movement that we've been in. And I wanna make a special note, keep in mind, he's not cold calling 10 years ago, he's cold calling today, 2021. So this is, not, and this is definitely not something from the past, it's something that can be done today. And Talk us through how your confidence builds, how some of the things that you actually say when you open up those conversations. Can you just maybe a little bit of a, I guess, script? Yes. So if I'm in a grocery store and we'll go through three different types of uh, calling that I do as far as cold calling, meeting folks in public, starting conversations and door knocking. So let's start with the grocery store. If I go to a grocery store and um, my object is to do the opposite. I understand what my, what my agenda is before I go in. So if I'm on the grape aisle and they pick up green grapes, I'm going to pick up purple grapes. And I'm going to ask them, oh, man, you like green grapes? Them things are way too sour for me. Conversation is about to start. And I'm like, man, yeah, man, my kids like them. I'm like, I got you. I'm going to get these great ones here. Uh, by the way, man, if I can never help uh, you might need help eating those green ones anyways. Just give me a call. My name is Quintavious Verde and I'm with Remax. I give them a card and I walk off. If they're on the ketchup aisle and they're getting mustard and I don't eat mustard anyways, but I'm like, oh man, what you, you cooking burgers tonight? I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? You getting mustard, man. I don't eat mustard. Uh, what do you eat mustard with? You cooking? I'm like, oh yeah, man, my family, we're cooking burgers. Well, I got it. Well, hey, if you ever invite me over to your house, have some mayonnaise and they're laughing. I'd be like, hey, by the way, this is Quintavious. Uh, with Remax, and here's a card. If I can ever help, just let me know. It's easy conversation like that. It, it, it can even go to the milk aisle. If they get whole milk, I'm gonna pick up 
you drink whole milk? Oh my God, that makes my stomach hurt. And they're gonna laugh and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna grab this 2%. By the way, you get some cereal? What, what, what type of cereal do you eat? And they're gonna talk and say, well I, well, I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Here's a business card. If I can never help, just let me know. And it's just that simple. Uh, and I have people bag their groceries and take them to the cars and, hey, you need help? I know you got a uh, buggy. You can't open the door and put bags in. Let me help. Just little simple stuff like that to A, to make folks feel comfortable, make them laugh. And, and it, it's all about being likable. Can you have a conversation with any and everybody? And I think I can. That's why I tell people all the time, I can relate to the old agent or the new because I can talk to both. Um, so now that's in public. I just relate to something that they're doing and I try to do the opposite. And I try to make it to where it's within the box that they might laugh or, you know, even at the gas pump, if, if they're getting 89, I'm like, God, what do you do? You, you, you finna spend an a arm and a leg for, for some gas. Man, you need to get you a new car. You're like, man, I know, man. That's what I'm, well, I'm gonna I'm keep getting this cheap old 87 and running my car down. But anyway, if I can never help, man, let me know. Simple. Uh, so when I cold call, I try to hit five points. And those five points to me, like I said, those are the things that I've learned since being right. in uh, Time to share my screen now. Yep. We'll get you started. Okay. All right, so five points when I'm cold calling. This is not the four point system. Uh, we'll hit that. Oh, you got a five point for cold calling. Okay. Yes. All right. So it, it's when we're cold calling, our goal is, like I say, to ask for the person, mm -hmm. to introduce ourselves, to give back to the time, to neutralize the conversation, and I'll show you what that means, and then to get to the point. So if I'm calling Michelle, it's, hey, my speak with Michelle? Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hey, Michelle, <laughs> what table is over at Remax? Did I catch you at a bad time? Um, no, I'm okay. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, Ole Miss got Alabama this weekend in baseball. You a baseball fan? Who you cheering for? Uh, Chicago Cubs. Oh, wow. When last time you guys won a game? <laughs> uh, well, um, finally, they're opening uh, Wrigley Field back up this year, so I will be going. I, I used to go all the time two years ago. There we go. Can't complain. But look here, I'm not going to keep you too long. I see you have a property up here at 123 Main Street. Have you guys thought about potentially upsizing, downsizing, kind of moving on from that property? Well, we've, we're kind of cramped right now, so we would love to upsize. We, we'd love more space at some point. And boom, there we go. It starts. She tells me everything I need to hear. They're thinking about upsizing. And in my mind, I turn into a lie. I'm trying to see exactly every single thing, every angle that fits their box or what their needs so I can make sure that I can hit it to get them to say, hey, you've hit every box. You've checked everything that you know, we are concerned about, we are ready to move forward. What do we do next? That's what I'm trying to get to them. So I'm asking them questions after questions. But as you can see, I asked for the person, I introduced myself, I gave back to the time. Hey, it's now a good time to talk. I neutralized the conversation with the baseball. And then I got to the point. Every call is just like that, over and over and over. And here's the good thing. I use the exact same neutralizer in every single call in that session. So if I'm calling and I use baseball, I'm gonna use baseball every single call. And I've had people to say, you just called my husband and said the same exact thing. You're right. It's a machine. <laughs> it's <gone. laughs> so awesome. uh, that, that's a cold call and it's different. Like I said, I might call Michelle and now Michelle, you're not you're, you're not you, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you could be your eyes for somebody else. Hey, Matthew with Shelby. Uh, this is. You're Michelle, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I got to look here. Uh, this is Quintavis over at Remax. Um, I was calling for the homeowner of One Two Three Main Street. Am I talking to the right person? Yes, actually, that's my house. Got it. Okay. Look here. Um. Ole Miss is playing Alabama. I'm not sure if you're an Ole Miss fan, but I am. I went to Ole Miss. Who do you cheer for nowadays? Ole Miss. There we go. Hotty toddy. I love it. You're one of me. Uh, but I know this house that you have here, you guys thinking about doing anything with it? 
Well, I mean, we've been seeing all the news reports that everybody's uh, selling their houses the first day they put it on the market. Um, we definitely need more space. Right. So it's a seller's market. My question is, if you sell it, do you know where you're going next? No, we just, I mean, we want to stay in the area. Our kids are in school and, you know, but we just want more space. There's a couple of neighborhoods that we like. Got it. Do you mind texting me those neighborhoods? That way I can look them up and I'll tell you if any houses come available. So what I did was I didn't just say, okay, great. I want her to text me. I want her to be interactive. I want her, if she texts me, I know that she's on board. All right. I don't want to just leave it up to me going out finding it and then she's really truly not looking in those neighbors. I want her to text me in the neighborhood she's interested in. And when a house comes available, I'm gonna shoot it to her. It's just that simple and it's connecting and it's talking and it's so calm. Most folks think of a cold call as a way to sell. No, you're cold calling to drum up conversation that leads to potential business. It's about getting a half a point. It's not, you're not gonna score. It's, it's very seldom you're going to get on the phones and call and score that day. What you're trying to do is set it up for you get enough maybes within 90 days. When 90 days rolls around, they're starting to open up and say, hey, I'm ready to sell, ready to buy. And that's part of the four-point system of getting a half a point. All right, so we wake up every day, and the goal is to get a contract, to get a listing agreement, to show a buyer, or to meet a potential customer looking to do business in 90 days. Uh, in any way that you slice it, uh, if you get four points every single day, your business will do this. It's never a dull day when you wake up and you get four points. And it's never a day when you wake up and get four points that you haven't accomplished something that is very, very important within your business. So some days when I get four points, you know what I do? I go home and I play Fortnite. What are Fortnite lovers? You know, because I play Fortnite, I play mad, and I enjoy my time. I go to the gym and shoot around. I go back to my high school and practice with the high school basketball team. And uh, it's, it's just, now it's my time to kill. But some days, like yesterday, I get more than four points and I just keep going and I keep working and I keep going and I keep working till I end up with 32 points. How did you come up with this, by the way? So in, in athletics, uh, we understand that the score yesterday, the score that you had last week, if you scored two touchdowns last week, the next game, it doesn't roll over. There's no rollover cost in, in, in athletics and scoring points and whatever it is. So just like real estate, you don't get a pass just because you had a good day yesterday. You have to wake up again every single day and do it over and over and over again. That's your job. That's what you sign up to do. And every week, week in and week out, that running back gets paid to score touchdowns. He can't say, well, I didn't score a touchdown this, this game, but I scored two last game, but we lost this week. You didn't do your job. Same thing, you got a contract yesterday, but you don't have anything now showing for for today that's gonna help your family be in a position that you want it to be in. It's gonna help you reach your goal that you wanna hit by the end of the year because yesterday you're living on the, in the past. We have to live in the present. Every day we wake up, it's, there's no question. Do we have something to do? Yes, we have to get four points. This allows us to get four points. This is my schedule. And as you can see, I don't have any time on my schedule. I don't believe in time blocking as far as saying, hey, I need to do this by eight, nine, 12, two, because in the sense that you wake up a little later than you, you, you did yesterday and now you've put it on your schedule to be in the office by nine and now it's 9.05 and now you're feeling like, God dang, I'm behind and uh, I need to rush to catch up and you get sloppy. So we don't put time on the board. What we do is we put productive activities. And there's a lot of things that you can do within this business, but productive activities are the ones that's gonna have you doing this. All right, so productive activity on Sundays. The first thing we do, we rest. So when we wake up, I might go upstairs and play the game. I might go outside and shoot baskets. Um, I might just lay on the couch and watch TV. But at some point, I have to get off the couch. I have to put the basketball down, put the game down, and go make 100 calls. And then after the 100 calls, I'm done for that day. What, Monday, time, of, what time of day do you find it best to make those calls on Sunday? So on Sundays, you know, most of us go to church. Yeah. Um, and church normally ends anywhere from 
11 to 2. So the best time for me to make sure they're completely out of church, because let me tell you, black folks, they stay in church all day long. <laughs> so if you want to fix everybody, you need to wait until about 2 o'clock. All right, you wait until about 2 o'clock, you start calling, and you're done by 3.30 when they're trying to have dinner on a Sunday. So that's the best time on Sunday. On Monday, when it's time to make those 200 calls, uh, I found the best time is either you get up early and start calling by 8, the 8 to that 9.30 hour, because most folks, they're in their car. They can talk. The kids, they just dropped the kids off. They just got to work. How many of us just get to work at 9 o'clock but don't start working until around 9, 30, 10? That's most people. They still have their phones. They're getting wind down in their office, so they'll still take a call, and they're going to try to whisper, but <laughs> yeah, I don't just talk to them. But um, so Monday we try to call anywhere from eight to nine thirty, or that six to eight o'clock hour at night. And a lot of folks say, "Oh no, you calling at eight o'clock at night? How many of us go to bed at eight o'clock at night? Most folks have their phone in their hands. They're on social media. They're laughing. That's the best time to call them. That's when they're feeling their best to kind of talk. Throughout the day, most folks are busy and can't talk. Uh, so 8 to 9.30 in the morning or 6 to 8 o'clock at night is what I found to be the best time. But then on Monday, we have an open time. That open time allows me to walk around the office, talk to other agents, get on my phone, social media, make a post, uh, jump up and down, whatever it is. When I made the post yesterday, it was because it was in my open time and I was very excited uh, for the day that I had. Um, and then after that, you go to a location and pass out business cards. On Monday, I have to pass out 50 business cards. You uh, must go through a lot of business cards. <laughs> yes, I, I order, um, I think we order like two or 3,000 at a time. Nice. Um, I'll but, show everyone what they look like too. Yes, there we go. Because we're trying to get them out. We're trying to get them out. But it's 50 new people. It's people you've never met that you just hand a business card to that now has your information, did not know you was in real estate, uh, so they will never probably use you, but now they do. That's the thinking. All right, on Tuesdays, I don't have a team. What it means is I meet and I go through all of my files. And I kind of talk to my assistant through things that we need to do, things we need to check, move, do this. But then um, I call and text my sellers and my buyers to check in on them. Um, and then at the end of the day, or I can do this stuff like one, two, three, by 11 o'clock uh, this morning and make the 200 calls and be done. And now I'm free to go out and do exact, you know, anything that I want to do. Um, Wednesday, we can see the schedule. But the point is to have a schedule and to stick to it. And don't allow anything to uh, dictate your schedule. If you have to go out and show, go out and show and come back and pick up where you are. With you not having a time thing, now it doesn't matter when you do it. You can go up until 8 o'clock and finish if you want to cut it that close. Um, now, well, Steve, what is the sorry? What is the general population of your area, and what is your average sales price? Yeah, so my average sales price is uh, one hundred and ninety, maybe two hundred thousand. Uh, okay. And the population uh, from, like I said, my hometown is about eight thousand people. In DeSoto County, there's maybe hundred thousand, maybe. Uh, so it's not huge. It, it, it's, it's not a New York or a California, but it's large enough to go out and meet new people every day. Um, and like I say, we go to buy here. You'll see my market is consisted of about eight different counties. So I can go to this place and it's just been folks I've never in my life talked to. And everywhere you go, you're gonna meet new people. You don't know everybody. So uh, even if you had a pool of 8,000 people, you wouldn't meet all of them. I don't care how long you try because you're never gonna really come in contact with everybody. Um, right. This photo, was from yesterday that I posted during my open time. And it's one of those marketing things that I do. And I ask the folks, who want to win? Because we know how to win in this office. If you want to win, you call me. Pick up the phone and let's do it. I'm out working. I tell them, hey, door knocking and cold calling works because they know I'm not going to sit on my behind and complain about the market. All right. And it's a marketing tool for sellers and buyers and other agents. I've had five or six agents reach out to me hey, I have a buyer looking for this. If you find something, give me a call. I will. I will do that. Yes. Um, so it's, it's marketing myself and it's by design 
that you see all those business cards on those folders. Simply A, because I was covering up the address, but B, I just want them to see that card as much as they can. Everywhere they go, I want them to see that card. I want them to see my face. My object of my business is to be in multiple places at one time. And how can I do that? It's by putting cards in places, all right? Putting cards in places where you know folks are gonna go, but also being somewhere else. So I have my moving truck as well that sits at the Kroger that I go and pass out groceries at. So the days I'm not at Kroger, the moving truck is there and it's working. All right, and the days that I want to try to move a truck, I take it to a new uh, subdivision that's being newly built and I park it there and I go back to Kroger. So now I'm in two places at one time, every single time. And it's amazing, you know, this truck, I get people to call me from this truck that's looking to move pianos or a little couch, uh, somebody that wasn't even looking to buy a house, uh, they can use it, but the thing is, they use it and they think of me and they post these photos and now I'm in multiple places at one time. The photo is all over their social media, but my truck is parked in another location. Yep. I saw the, your, on your timeline on Facebook, your clients are posting selfies with your moving truck because yes. they're so excited. <laughs> yes. Do you own this truck or do you lease it? I own it. Uh, we bought it outright in Mississippi. You can't uh, give a truck for free if you lease, you have to own it. So I looked at it, my CPA was telling me I need to spend money, need to spend money because like I said, I do it the old school way. I don't spend money. I do not cold call. I don't spend money on marketing, leads or anything of that such. But I bought this truck because I had to spend money. She wanted me to buy a Range Rover. Yeah. Are you kidding me? A Range Rover? No, nah, <laughs> I'm buy a moving truck. I'm going to do something that can benefit the business, not hurt it. Uh, me driving a Range Rover wouldn't do anything great for my business. So we put this, and as you can see, I put my sign on the truck. Uh, that way they see that everywhere I go, I'm trying to get a soul. If you call my phone and I don't answer, my voicemail says, hey, this is Quintavious Verde with Remax. Everyone calls me Q, so you can call me Q. I'm probably out putting out soul signs. That's why I didn't answer your call. Soul sign everywhere I go. I'm trying to brand it to where I'm going to get the job done every single time. And it's, it's, it's an awesome tool, like I say, to use and to pledge. And here's the thing, no other agent offers that in the market. No other agent posts about themselves more than I do. But you wanna know another trick? No other agent in this market sells more houses than me in this short span of two years. It's because I'm doing things that no other agent wants to do or and too embarrassed to do for themselves because they're worried about what Jane at this broken chair is gonna think, oh, they're always posting about themselves. They're so full of themselves. You should be. <laughs> Absolutely, self-promotion is where it's at. Yes. Um, we're gonna shift gears really quick and then go back to uh, your business strategies. But you are a division one collegiate athlete and your wife is also, I just found out a volleyball player. Yes. Hello, Emily, if you're watching or if she's nearby, tell her hello from all of us. And uh, can you talk to us a little bit about your athletic career? You, you ran track and you played football. That's amazing. So I'm sure that won't surprise any of you. How do the disciplines and the training from athletics transfer into real estate? Uh, it, it, it's like turning the page and you're reading the same book because the same principles goes uh, into it. Whereas every day you have to work, you have to outwork. You have to be a team player. You have to be have a helping hand. You have to trust others. You have to be trusted. On the picture to the far left in the track uniform, for me to start this race, it's a four-guy race. And we're running as fast as we can around the track once. For me to start, I have I have a lot of pressure on me, but I have a lot of trust that are put on me by the other three guys. Because if I have a bad start, the race is dead. If I false start, meaning if I go before the gun is shot, we're DQ'd. So they have to understand, they have to trust me enough. My coaches have to trust me enough to say, I have so much faith that Q is A, going to start on time, and he's going to start well enough, and he's going to pass the baton and get us started. All right? So it started with real estate the same way. My broker has to trust that I'm going to go out and bring in business and do it the right way and put my name out there in the light of Remax's and sure it 
to, to, to show what, what type of brand that we have. All right. Every day when I wake up, I have to go to practice. Starting out, I had to practice on my calls. And it was one of those things, football, where we would start at like 5.30 in the morning. We would practice, we would then work out, go to class, and then have tutoring, and then have practice at night. So I was going from 5.30 to 8.30 at night all throughout my college career. So when I got started in real estate, when most folks were saying, oh, you got to slow down because you're going to burn out, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this my whole life. This is nothing new. This is easy. I get a break. I get to stop when I want to. In college, I didn't have a break. I couldn't stop when I wanted. I was on basically someone else's time, but it was all that I knew. And it's teamwork. You have to teamwork. We co-op with agents all the time. We're on a team at that point. When an agent brings you a contract or you bring an agent a contract, regardless of which brokers you guys are with, you're a team at that point. Your job is to get the deal to the closing table for both parties. So we have to work together. And athletics have taught me how to work with people that I've never worked with before, come from different backgrounds than I have, different upbringings. Uh, some are slower, some are faster, some are taller, some are shorter. And we all work together to achieve one goal, to win. It all boils back to winning. So athletics, like I said, it played a huge role into, I think, my success and my discipline within the business because I understood that I can have a good day or a bad day today. But when I wake up tomorrow, it doesn't matter. I have to start over. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, because there's obviously so much discipline and drive in you and work ethic. Work it's ethic is so obvious and it's so it's, it's really crucial to be successful in this business. Um, so let's talk about door knocking and let's take a deeper dive into that. Before we do, I want to put a disclaimer out there. Some of you in the greater Toronto metro area or Chicago or these areas that it, where there's a lot of high rises, you can't go door knocking. We understand that. And maybe Q can give you some insight into how to approach farming in that type of way. But talk to us about door knocking and sort of uh, your approach, your, some of the things that you say, do you wear Remax shirts? You know, how do you make yourself, um, I guess, less threatening as a salesperson knocking on doors? So I always dress uh, casual uh, any, every day. I, I never wear a suit and tie. I don't want to come off as a sales guy. Uh, sometimes I wear an old Miss hat. Sometimes I wear a Remax hat. Sometimes I don't wear a hat at all. But every time I smile and I be myself. And I think that's what most folks want to see. They want to see you smile. They want to see you be yourself. But here's the thing. When I go door knocking, um, I'm not looking to get anything. And I tell them that, hey, uh, this is Quintavious over at Remax. Um, just coming to knock on the door and meet some of the homeowners. I've sold a couple of houses in this neighborhood. So I haven't met you guys yet. But here's a business card. If I can never help, just let me know. That's it. And I leave. And some of them start, hey, what do you think my house is worth? And I start talking to them more and more in depth. But every door knock is the same as the calls. It's the same door knock every single time. It's, I don't change it up or anything. And I'm doing the same things that I'm doing in grocery stores. If someone opens a door and they have an LSU shirt on, I'm like, oh, man, I'm at the wrong house. And they're like, oh, no. <laughs> now, they're laughing. now it's easy. And I say, man, look, I play ball at Ole Miss. So, you know, you know, you know why I say that. And uh, but anyways, I'm just here being some of the homeowners. Uh, I sold a couple of houses in the subdivision. If I can ever help, man, let me know. Although you got an LSU shirt on, I still work with you. And they just laugh and I go about my day. Uh, but it's overcoming that fear. Mm -hmm. And I think most folks, they go in expecting to get something from that person or getting them to commit at that time. Your job is to meet the person, be likable to a fact where they're gonna think about you when the time comes. You get enough of those and you start getting opportunities and people start to talk about how well of a job that you've done for them. That's when your name start ringing bells, all right? And, and, and it's, it's very important that I door knock and I cold call and I go to the grocery stores within the same area because now you maximize your touches with those folks. And right. it's different times and now like oh I recognize you you called me or hey you knocked on my door once and now you meet me in Kroger oh hey you knocked on my door and now you're calling me so it all kind of goes back together so you can't just door knock you can't just cold call you can't just go to Kroger you have to do a combination of all of it and during COVID 
a lot of folks ask, well, how did you do it now? I put a mask on. Put a mask on, I do it, I knock the door and I step back. And when they looking out, they're looking through the window, I'm waving. <laughs> now they're gonna open or they're gonna say no and I just go to the next door. But majority of the folks at least open up and talk to you. And I just, you know, talk to them, hey, I hope you guys are doing well during this pandemic. Uh, toilet paper is out. I think we have a couple of rows in my office. Here's a card. If you run out, call me. Wow. <laughs> the toilet paper approach. I love it. Yeah, it's just yeah. just always related to something that's going on that they can relate to as well. And now they'll be more receptive to take your card and maybe use it. Uh, right. So that's the door knocking. Door knocking is, I think, where I get... Uh, I have the most fun because I am actually in front of a live person and I get the most out of the door knock. Well, that's amazing. Um, I know there's questions coming in. We will get to those in just a second, but let's talk about the way the market's on fire right now, the frenzy that's going on across the country. Um, how are you handling multiple offer situations with bo both your buyers and your sellers? So let's speak on for my buyers. What we're doing is, and I tell my buyers, and, I, and I've said this over and over, I'm not going to tell them to do something that I wouldn't do myself. What I tell them is what's going on in the market and that I have them kind of tell me uh, what they're comfortable with. But something that I've done to allow my buyers to A, move into houses without having to do multiple offers is do a knock and cold call. I have a buyer looking. I know what they're looking for. I know uh, their price range. I can call and say, hey, I have a pre-approved buyer ready to go. That's looking to move in your subdivision today if they can. Uh, but of course, you know, transaction takes about 30 days. If there's anything that I can do, if you have any more questions or thinking about selling, uh, I have somebody that's already ready to go. And it's just that simple. How, how, how far are you willing to go for your buyer to make sure that they're not in all these multiple offer situations? But when we are in them, what we're doing is we're putting terms in which the buyer is comfortable, whether they win or lose. So now the blame isn't on the agent. You put it all out there. Whatever the buyers, you say, hey, if the price is 250 and I ask, I always ask them, hey, if you find out the house sold for 260 will you be mad? Oh, yeah, I'll be kind of upset. Okay, it's off for 260 Then I say, what if you found out it sold for 265 Oh, I mean, they, somebody buys it at 265, they can have it. Okay, so basically what you're telling me is you're good at 260, you're out at 265, what is 262, 500 look like for you? And they're gonna tell me. And if that's the case, now we've made our best offer for its price. Hey, now we, we've seen the house. Uh, does it need many repairs from the look of it? I'm not sure we have to have a home inspection, but are you handy? If you are, we can say, hey, we're going to still have our inspection, but we're going to buy the house as is because we can fix most of the stuff. If the inspection comes back and everything is terrible, we get out of it, get the honest money back. And if it's not, then the things that uh, we will fix, we'll fix ourselves. All right. As far as something that I will not do or tell them to do, if they approach me with it, I kind of, kind of, I try my best to discourage them is paying over the appraised value. I just don't believe in that. Me personally, because in five years when these buyers are calling you back to sell, you're going to have to explain to them, oh, I got you to pay 25000 over the appraised value, but I, mean, I can't sell that house and get your money back for that. And I never want that conversation to come out of my mouth. So I tell them, hey, if you're offering over the appraised value, if you're offering over asking, uh, we have to a, leave that contingency in there. If it appraises, great. But if we remove it, I want you to understand what you're doing. And if they're fine with it, by God, we'll do it because they're the boss. And if they're not, then of course we don't. So the goal, the object is write the offer to where if you win or lose, it's not your fault. You put everything out there that your buyer wanted um, and they're happy with it. And then you ask them before you submit it, if we lose, are you happy? With this offer, are you happy? And they you say, know what, I, what I like about you, Q, especially this is one of the first things I saw your breakout session at R4 on listing presentations. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about how you use the word we all the time instead of me or you? Right. So it, it's, it's an inclusion thing. It lets them know that we're in it together and I'm there every step of the way. But I want to be included. I want to be included in the decisions. I want to be included in uh, if you need help moving things or changing a light bulb or, or anything of that nature. I want them to feel from day one 
Like this guy is invested. And I want them to start thinking and saying that, hey man, we can get the house sold. Cause it's a team effort. We have to work together to get the house sold, agent and seller. So when we have a seller and we have multiple offers, we're looking for um, a couple of items, you know, A, the financing, what type of loan they're getting, what, what are they willing to pay us? Uh, but for anybody that, that's offering, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, $30,000 dollars over, and they're saying, hey, we'll pay $13,000 um, uh, over the appraised value, but they're only willing to put up $500 in earnest money. Like to me, they raise a red flag. Right. And those are the things that I'm looking at. Okay, they can pay $13,000 over what the house is worth, but they're not willing to put up more than $500, which tells me if it don't appraise, they're just going to walk for the 500 bucks. Let's, put them, let's have them put more skin in the game and now they're, they're not going to walk. And you start talking to those agents and going back and forth. Here in Mississippi, I don't think it's legal to do a multiple counter, but you can talk to multiple agents before you actually counter one. And we just try to see what they will do, what they won't, who's at their highest and best, who has a little more to offer. And we try to get it out of them. And when we have it, we present all the offers and we talk through it with our seller. We explain to them what this offer is versus this one. Because what a seller do is they'll look at it. We had a house where the people, we had it listed at uh, 245, they offered 275. They look at that 275 and they're like, this is the one. And I'm like, slow down grasshopper. <laughs> and that's when and that's when I started explaining to them, now they understand why the 275 isn't the best offer essentially, although it's the highest price. So we have to educate our sellers on what's going on, what each offer really is, and then allow them to make that decision. It's never our decision to make. And whatever decision they go with, we ask them, hey, you're choosing this, one. are you 100% happy? If something goes wrong, are you happy that you chose this offer and we're good with putting it back on the market? If not, we say, hey, let's look at other offers then, let's pick one that you're gonna be happy with at the end of the day. And that's just kind of how we deal with multiple offers. Uh, right, yeah. that's great. All right, let's take some questions. I think uh, a lot want to hear from you. Um, so a couple notes about door knocking, especially those of you in Canada. Canada has been on extreme lockdown because of COVID uh, mm -hmm. to the point where they couldn't even leave their own homes. So we are, when we talk about door knocking, we are obviously talking about a normal real estate environment. So yes, yeah, so please be mindful of that. Uh, we're not telling you to go out and break any rules, but um, to, you're gonna be better prepared thanks to Q when the time does come. So the question is from the Canadian audience, especially, or those that can't door knock if they're in a city environment, how do they promote themselves? Any suggestions? So everyone has social media. Um, everyone has the ability uh, when they go grocery shopping to go up and meet someone. So just because the door knocking is totally out of it uh, doesn't mean the person to person interaction is out of it. You, you, you take advantage of when you're in a restaurant to just say on your way out, hey, here's a business card. I know you guys are eating uh, right now. I just wanted to give you this. Call me if I can ever help. I'm a real estate agent. And just taking it uh, upon yourself to do those little things, but also build your social media presence. Talk to your spirit uh, and, and, and go about it like that to where you can still call. And I understand a lot of folks say, uh, well, what about the do not call list? To me, that list is for people who's looking to sell something. Yeah. I don't think anyone can tell you not to call somebody if you're looking just to make a friend. And that's how you have to approach that call is I'm not a salesman. I'm not looking to sell anything. I'm just looking to meet someone, give them my information, exchange numbers. You're at a bar. You're trying to date. You're trying yeah. to date. And that's how you kind of have to look at that call and just call them. And if they say, hey, why are you calling me? Just don't call them again. But not everyone uh, cares about uh, you calling them. Some folks are on the do not call list because you know they're getting so many spam calls and they just click a button. But it's not because you call them or a real estate agent call them. It's all kinds of stuff that's happening. But if you call them with the approach that you're gonna meet them, you're just looking to give them some information, then I think it's fine. I've never had anyone turn me in for, for cold call. And I, and, and, and I call everybody. Yep, and it sounds like you do. There is a question about, do you leave anything else besides your business card when you go door knocking? Maybe so I have a letter uh, that I type, but my letters are for the neighborhood itself. And I tell them what's going on 
in their market. Uh, if a house is sold, I tell them that. Um, so it basically, it's, it's, it's neighborhood driven, and, and I kind of just express to them uh, what's going on around their area. I pass it. I say, hey, will you get some in, some some free time? Just please read the letter. If you have any questions, call. Me. And it's just that simple. I don't. I don't. I don't want to have a full blown conversation, honestly, about what somebody's house is worth and all that different stuff, or because I don't have everything that I need in front of me at that time. And my mission is when I go door knocking, not to door knock one door and get a steal of a deal right now. It's to door knock hundreds of doors at one time and to meet 10 to 15 people who are going to take a liking to me. That one person might be great, yes, but it's one person. I can do more than a team of people. All right, so. Now in your two years, uh, are you repeating neighborhoods? Because that was one of the questions. Okay. And that's what I do. I don't go to neighborhoods. You know, my high sale uh, is actually, well, I got one on the contract right now that's closing in a couple of days for 600, but that's going to be my highest in my career. Uh, but normally I'm around that, you know, 150 to 275 more. That's my bread and butter. And those are the neighborhoods that I focus on, the people that I focus on, the people I connect more to. Um, and those are the people that I beat down the doors. But here's the thing, I go to the same places over and over because now when I'm walking down the street, people beat the horn, they stop, they hit, they put their hand out the window. They take what I'm giving because they know that by the time I get to their house, I'm not gonna be there. They know me now, they know why I'm coming and they're more likely to open the door and have a conversation with me because my conversation is about, hey, you wanna say hi, say you wanna say hi? No, I'm just, here to talk to you guys, meet you, uh, interact with you a little bit, and move on down the road. And they know that. It's all about your approach and what you come off as. If you come off as a salesman and somebody who's very demanding, then you're going to get that treatment. They're going to slam the door on you. But if you come by as someone who's looking to build relationships, who will throw cornhole boards with them when out there playing, then you'll be more reluctant to get the door open for you. For sure. Um, so there's a lot of questions about how to promote yourself to condos and apartments, again, in more of a city environment. Um, any ideas for direct mail, any type of letters? Yeah. Uh, go to threeclick.com and you Three, can- Threeclick.com. I'm going I'm to type it in the chat box. Just okay. click and it'll pop up. Uh, what you can do is you can put in an address and you can send out hundreds of like little postcards and it's very, very cheap. Like you can send 300 postcards for 125 bucks. Uh, and I do it on my listings, uh, but you can do it if you wanted to form an area or an apartment complex or a condo. Uh, something else I guess you can do is uh, go to the pool parties at the apartments and the condos, figure out when they're having events and go and talk to the people and just understand that maybe you're going to get kicked out sometimes, maybe you won't, but I would start getting more involved in the activities that they're doing. For sure. And since if you're on lockdown still, maybe talk to the management companies of those places that you can maybe invite everyone to a Zoom where you have it's your, yourself and a lender and you're just educating them on how affordable it is to buy a bigger home or if they're renting to buy instead of rent. Um, right. for, yeah. Um, let's see. Also, there's a, a, there's a new agent, Stefania. Hi, Stefania, who says uh, that, you know, she's got very overwhelmed by just getting in the business and she loves the idea of the approach of just strangers, but she's concerned about her credibility and not having experience. And I think you're a great person to answer this question. Does the topic of how much experience you have ever come up and how have you ever handled that when you're brand new? Right, so some ask, most don't. Um, the ones who do, I let them know that, hey, Remax uh, is number one company uh, in the world when it comes to selling real estate. I have 200 agents in my office with uh, rangings of one year of experience or to 30. Um, so I have the uh, support within my office to kind of get this job done. But let me tell you what I do is, uh, I answer my phone every time it rings. When you call me, I'm gonna answer. All right, I might can't talk every time you call, but every single time I at least answer the phone. And something I'm gonna do is I'm not as busy as most agents. I'm gonna focus on your property. I'm gonna get your property sold. And if you've sold one a house, two houses, three houses, 50 or zero, 
The thing is having that confidence in yourself to say, hey, I'm more qualified to get the job done than anyone else because I'm here today. All right, I'm here today looking you in your face and telling you, if you give me this opportunity, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to get your house sold for what it needs to. I'm going to make sure I take this back to my broker. We're going to look at it together. We're going to make sure the pricing is right. We're going to, I'm going to see exactly what it is to do as far as the market. So you have to just be honest with them and lay it out there and let them know that you want to work for them. You want to do those things. And, and eventually you'll get that break and you'll get that opportunity. But not all. Like I said, most folks, they don't care about that. All they care is, can you sell my house? Yes. How much can you sell it for? What does your process look like? So what you need to understand is start to talk to agents who are selling houses and understand their process, see what they're doing. That way, now when your, your chance comes, you know exactly what to do. Absolutely. And if 3click.com, again, I'm not sure if it's available in Canada, I'm, you have your ways of getting those postal addresses and postal routes. Um, so please, in your FSAs, look into all of that. Um, so there's a question that is a really good question. So you, what are you doing for, we, they all are very excited about what you do to prospect to get new business. What are you doing for your sphere of influence and family and friends in the meantime? Yeah, so um, I have group texts and I'm always um, laughing and, and interacting with the things they put on social media. So my goal is, so when you understand how social media works, it's easy. Uh, you see the stuff that you interact with but your people see your stuff based off your interaction with their posts. So if you're interacting with every single post that come across, you're laughing at it, putting laughing faces, putting comments, they see you over and over and over again. And I post a lot. And I post a lot of stuff that maybe ask questions that maybe now they can chime in on. But um, as far as my posts that I sold houses to, I just check in on them. I just went to a client's uh, barbecue that I sold a house to two years ago, my very first year. I went to the barbecue. You would have thought we've talked every single day. We haven't talked much since, but they're one of my biggest clients as far as uh, they refer me to a lot of folks. We talk, we text, we Facebook a lot. They, when they post, I come in. When I post, they come in. So it's a lot of things you can do naturally. Uh, on my follow-up, on my board, uh, it just tells me that I go down and I, I text all my buyers and my sellers an A through L for something in my phone. Then the next week I might do uh, G through, you know, I or something, but it's, it's just natural touch. When I see them, I'm um, interacting, making them laugh. Uh, so it's, it's little simple stuff that's, it don't take much effort or much thought. I don't have any client appreciation parties yet or anything of that nature, uh, but I'm staying in front of my people the best that I can uh, while I can also uh, remain productive. Definitely. And just to clarify, everyone, sorry, <laughs> it's threeclickpostcards.com. I just put it in the chat box. Spell out the word three, clickpostcards.com. So after I just looked it up myself to make sure it was there. So uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, really good questions, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Great comments. Everyone's so excited. Yes, this is being recorded, everyone. It will be shared afterwards. Last call for questions, and then I'm going to do a quick rapid fire question with Q so that you can get to know him a little bit better. So anyone else? Definitely. Lisa Hanley says this will be one to watch over and over again. You are a big hit. You've got a lot of new uh, a fan base now. Yes, yeah, so you guys can follow me, like I say, on Instagram at Quintavious Birdhead, uh, at Quintavious Birdhead. I love you guys to chime in. And uh, what I do is I post stuff here and there, but I got to act with people on there as well. That's right. So thank you. All right. Let's do a rapid fire and then we'll wrap it up. So everyone, uh, let's learn a little bit more about Q. So Q, iPhone or Android? iPhone. I hate green messages. Yes. Are you a night person or morning person? Morning. I like to get up and, and the early bird gets the worm. Nice. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, strawberry. Nice. Favorite TV show to binge watch? Uh, so I'm a huge binge watcher of anything, but if I had to go back and rewatch, it's, it's a tie between the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Martin. 
So I have all those uh, seasons at my house. I watch those a lot. Love that. I love Fresh Prince. And what is your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday is actually 4th of July. Nice. What do you do? So we have, growing up, we used to, we had about 20 or 30 folks. We used to divide up into teams and have a war. Uh, we used to have, you know, fireworks. We used to have water guns, uh, balloons. And now uh, that we're older, we do the same thing, but it's, it's probably about 15 to 20 people maybe, but we have a cookout and it's just a time where mostly everyone is home and off and out of school where they can come and enjoy uh, a weekend, uh, but also just one of two times where you can shoot out fireworks and just have a good time. Fantastic. Yep. So what are your final words of advice to all your Remaxers out there on how to be successful and how to reach chairman's level and beyond in 2021? Yes. So it's, it's two things. Answer your phone every time it rings, regardless of who's calling, what's calling, answer the phone. It can be unknown. It can be spam. Uh, regardless, answer the phone. You don't have to talk every time, but you have to answer every time. And second, have confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself, believe in what brand that you're a part of, believe in why you wake up and the reason that you're in real estate and why you should be the person that these folks call on. And with that confidence and that belief, then that's when you start to truly see yourself being successful. Don't worry about what everyone else has to say. Just go out and be productive within your own skin. Thank you so much. It uh, looks like you've got raving fans going on in the chat. Thanks everyone for attending. We love Remax. Uh, Q, you have been fantastic. You're so humble about your success. We appreciate you. Amazing things ahead for you. So uh, we, we, I see Titan for you coming up. Uh, forget Platinum, we're going Titan. <laughs> oh, Diamond, let's go Diamond. Diamond is the key. All right, Diamond, we're going for Diamond. We'll just bypass them all. Um, thank you so, so much. I've really enjoyed getting to know you. I can't wait to meet you in person someday soon, hopefully, and take care and just have a fantastic 2021. Thanks, we everyone. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.